Welcome to Real Physics. You know, this channel is about fundamental physics, but sometimes you have also to question the established stuff like dark matter. And for that, I'm going to read you a subchapter of my very cheeky first book, Bankrupting Physics. A chapter about also, I think, scientific arrogance that made a friend of mine roll on the floor, he told me. Ignoring the warning signal, the caravan continues on. I can't help but tell you how some leading scientists react to Mond's findings. You know, modified Newtonian dynamics is an alternative idea, how to explain dark matter. Not bad, maybe not correct, but very interesting to the least. And I was asking one of the guys. The Max Planck Institute near Munich is one of the most prestigious research facilities in astrophysics. Thus, I was looking forward to attending an open house there, where scientists from all over the world would answer any question. As a teacher, and in this respect a representative of poor educationally distressed schools, I am always welcomed by experts who generously pass down their elite research. Since I happened to sit at a table next to Simon White, the Institute's head, I asked what his opinion of Mond was. I have no opinion, he replied thoughtfully. As a scientist, I look only at the data. Yet he looked like I had just proposed to read his horoscope, and I was quick to assert that Mond was, of course, refuted and theoretically horrifying. But I asked whether we should nonetheless wander about all spiral galaxies carrying the particular acceleration, C over Tu, related to the age of the universe. I regard it as pure coincidence, he said. And besides, the distant galaxies should show us then a completely different age of the universe. I tried to bring to my mind for a second where I had heard that argument before. I eventually remembered that several months earlier I had told in my astronomy course about the dark matter riddle. One of my best students, he had twice won the contest for young scientists, Jugendforscht, with his creative aircraft constructions, soon came up with the same argument against Mond. Indeed, great distances, taking into account light travel time, are a glimpse of the past and one would have to consider the galaxy's erstwhile age when calculating the acceleration c over tu, tu being the age of the universe. On closer inspection, this doesn't of course quite argue against Mond by any means. Rotation curves, a subtle and difficult measurement, can only be attained from relatively nearby galaxies. Otherwise, we would already have inspected more than 1,000 of the universe's assortment of 100 billion galaxies. The analyzed galaxies are therefore quite representative, but altogether much too close for the light travel time to play any role. My student back then understood this right away, and hence I did wonder a little bit about White's argument. While I was replaying the story in my head, he had become involved in another conversation and apparently felt no further need to discuss the intricacies of Mond. Some months later, I began to think that my impartial question may have annoyed Simon White a little. His research is among the most cited by astrophysicists. Hundreds of articles are devoted to a Navarro Frank White profile of dark matter in galaxies and extensive simulations by supercomputers are based upon this. My naive question to him about Mond ultimately implied, might it be that you have devoted the last 25 years of your research trying to catch a phantom? Mm -hmm.